I'm Paul Butler. I'm one of the client partners at New Leaf Training and Development, and I'm joined today by Jefferson Rogers, who is the VP for Human Resources for the Gersh Agency. Uh, Jefferson, for the last 15 years at New Leaf, we've focused on our core purpose to help people and organisations better manage themselves, better lead others, and grow business acumen. And I just wondered, from your experience, what would you say your recommended best practices in those three areas. But please do start, though, by telling us a little bit more about your organisation, you know, what you specifically do and who you serve. So over to you, Jefferson, and I'll wrap it up when you're done. No problem. Thanks for having me, Paul. Um, so, yes, I'm the Vice President of Human Resources for the Gersh Agency. I just recently joined. Prior to that, I was the Head of Human Resources for Paradigm Talent Agency, but we are a talent representation business. Actors, directors, producers, comedians, unscripted stars from platforms like YouTube, TikTok. We do the full full buffet of, of talent out there that we represent. So that's, that's the business we work in. As far as my function, I'm reporting directly into the co-presidents and supporting every single level of the company. We're both on the East Coast and West Coast in Beverly Hills in New York. So working with the management team, I work with the office leaders, I work with our partners, all of the agents, our coordinators, the assistants across the board, just kind of coaching where they need me and, and moving from office to office. I get a lot of exercise going around a lot on these Zoom calls, I'll tell you. <laughs> um, as far as, as what my strategy is, especially, it, it's, it's always called performance management, but I always just call it checking in. I think the biggest skill everyone needs right now, and especially with COVID and coming back to re-entry into the office, is just empathy. It's, it's mm -hmm. that emotional intelligence that's needed so much as far as just understanding everyone is doing the best they can in the given situation, and you don't know what's going on in people's lives mm -hmm. at the end of the day. You know what they show you, you know what you see on Zoom calls and what you're told, but once that camera goes off and once someone leaves the office, there's a whole nother life that happens. So when people are having issues at work, whether it's performance, whether it's struggling with coworkers, supervisors, I always have to take that step back. And I had a really good mentor when I worked for Colony Capital, her name's Karen Fink. And she always encouraged me to take that step back and look at the broader picture and not just so laser focused mm. sometimes because you never know what's going in. So, you know, I coach a lot on, managers who don't know how to have performance conversations they've been promoted automatically into manager roles without any real training and they're really nervous about having conversations when there are performance issues so i always tell them to change the mindset and mm. just call it checking in you're checking in like you would a friend a family member how are you what's going on find out what's going on in their lives i find that nine out of ten people don't know who their assistants partners are, if they have kids, what their relationships are like, where they even live. So it's like, just yeah. check in with people, learn who they are, ask how they are. You'll find out that nine out of 10 performance issues are something personally that's happening, whether they have a sick parent, a sick spouse, a child, something's going on at school, but something that is distracting them from doing their best. And once you get to kind of the root of what those distractions are, you can work with the employee to come up with ways to make things better, whether they need time off just to take some leave, whether they need some backup support. I find a lot of people have different incoming priorities from different departments and they don't want to disappoint anyone. So they're trying to do mm -hmm. the work of 10 people, but they're not telling everyone and setting those expectations that there's a lot going on and they need to set some boundaries. And there's nothing wrong with that, but you have to be mm -hmm. able to communicate and let your supervisor know. And, you know, once the supervisors ask those questions and really dive into it and not from a, you're doing a bad job or something is wrong. It's a, how are you? Are you okay? And just starting from that baseline and then building. Obviously, if nothing's going on or they don't give you anything, it's really hard to, to go from anywhere except for a performance improvement plan at that point as far as what your expectations are and what you want to see. And if it's not corrected, then you know we're going to have to take more action. But honestly, I find that just having a basic human conversation and having that empathy really sets the runway for a good, strong conversation and a stronger resolution as far as you know, the manager feels like they're more connected now and the mm. employee feels like their manager is really listening to them and supporting them. And that's what's so important, especially when you find out that so many things are happening to them that you might not have been aware of. It's just really taking that step back and having empathy that I can, that I really think solves so many of those day-to-day -day problems that people always tell me about and also build up. I think timing is everything too. You can't wait for things to be a problem yeah. for six months and then decide to address it. Like if something's going on, address it in that moment.
and don't wait until it's too late. You'll also forget at that point and the details get foggy. So, you know, as much as possible, address it as it happens and then you don't have to struggle to remember. So that's what I think is the best strategy overall. Um, Jefferson, I really appreciate that. And on behalf of everyone that watches these, and as you know, they become immensely popular now. Thanks for your insights uh, to help people and organizations really better manage themselves and lead others and grow business acumen. Jefferson, could I offer you a virtual high five? Please. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. This was awesome. Jefferson, thanks ever so much. Have a great rest of the day. My pleasure. You too.